Madurai, one of the oldest cities in South India. At the heart of the city is a temple, built more than 2,500 years ago, dedicated to the goddess Meenakshi, fish-eyed consort of Lord Shiva. Legend has it that Lord Shiva himself performed 64 miracles here. In Madure is a place called Aravind. Dr. Govinda Pavenkataswamy was 58 when he founded Aravind. When it first started, the hospital had 11 beds. Its mission was the eradication of needless blindness. Today, it is the largest and most productive eye care facility in the world. I am Dr. Venkada Swami. You see, I have been in, in the field of eye care for the last uh, 50 years now. <laughs> Early days of that. And the Ompula. Maga. Yeah, Maga. You are not an alarm. 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 You are not an Yeramanayaka worked the fields before losing his sight ten years ago. He now lives with his daughter in a house he never finished building. Sundari moved in with her daughter after blindness set in. She tries to live on water weeks at a time, so as not to be a burden to her family. You know, in a, in a way, uh, blindness is, uh, is a fatal disease in India. Uh, the life expectancy after blindness is two and a half or three years. If you can't feed yourself and your family, then there's a, there's a bad expression in India, which is a blind person is someone who is ma mouth but no hands. Cataract. The clouding of the eye's lens is the leading cause of blindness in the developing world. While a simple operation can restore sight, access to treatment can be difficult. 
Perhaps no one understood this better than a man known to many as Dr. V. Dr. V was uh, uh, dedicated to the proposition that he had to reach out into the villages. And if there's any, anyone in the world who really understood the core necessities of social marketing, I think before the term was invented, uh, he was the person. See, McDonald's concept is simple. They feel they can train people all over the world, irrespective of different religions, different culture, different all those things, to produce a product in the same way and deliver it in the same manner in hundreds of places. He kept talking about McDonald's and hamburgers, and none of it made any sense to us. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to create a franchise, a, a, a mechanism of delivery of eye care with the efficiency of McDonald's. Supposing I'm able to produce eye care techniques, methods and all those things in the same way and make it available in every corner of the world, the problem of blindness is gone. There are now five Aravindai hospitals in South India. They are all self-sustaining and together they see over 1.4 million patients and perform over 200,000 sight restoring surgeries each year. Two-thirds of its services are free. All the Aravindai hospitals have free and paying sections. Patients decide where they want to be treated. While choice of accommodation varies between the two sections, the quality of treatment does not. At Aravind, every patient who can pay covers costs for two who cannot. Because of their high numbers, the revenue from paying patients not only covers costs for Aravind's free services, but also generates a surplus that funds all growth and expansion. And I don't insist upon that, that man must pay me before I do anything for him. I said, give the sight man, let him give whatever he can give. If he has cannot afford, doesn't matter, he can give later. So priority is for human welfare. All the hospitals send medical teams into the villages. Patients requiring surgery are brought back to the base hospital where they receive food, lodging, treatment and return transport completely free of charge. Close to 50% of all the patients Aravind treats are sought out and brought back to the hospital through these screening eye camps. So the, the, the typical problems that a patient has is how do I get to the hospital? Someone has to come with me. It's going to cost me a lot of money. Uh, other person doesn't want to come because he can't take the time off. So all of these barriers are taken care of. Over the years, we built up a huge network of community organizations that support us. And now each year, we organize 1,500 screening eye camps, which translates to roughly 30 to 40 screening camps every week. 
Dr. V's involvement with the community began long before the start of Aravind. See, when I started the eye camps in 1961, the government wanted us to reach the villages. The leaders in the community also saw this one and they were uh, thrilled. And they said, we will come and help you also. So it became a sort of people's movement. In our early days, Gandhiji was all in all for us. His simple life, his truthfulness, and he said spiritual life, progress can be made in the life, not going to a monastery or going to ashram. During his years of government service, Dr. V met Sir John Wilson, a blind man of great vision and founder of the Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind. In my life, I think he did a lot of work to mentor me. Lots of times I felt I was not coming up to his expectations. Being brought up in a colonial country, you are all the time looked down upon. You used to pull me up constantly. Come and we will go and see the Prime Minister or we will go and see this uh, WHO meeting, something like that. He used to call me up. Uh, he will take me, he will say, I will show you around. <laughs> Blind man, I decided not to With his help, a centre was set up that drastically reduced childhood blindness due to nutritional deficiencies. The two men also launched a nationwide eye camp programme that took hundreds of mobile medical units right to the doorstep of the blind. In, in our system, we operate each day between 600 to 1,000 patients. And we need to do that for us to be, to remain efficient. And the whole systems are geared around doing that. And this doesn't happen accidentally. Dr. V said administration is essential. And two of the qualities that he brought to the Arvind model were the necessity of good administration and a conviction that systems could substitute for a richness in available human resources. The paramedical team at Aravind forms the backbone of the system. These young women are recruited from villages around Madurai and are trained in refraction testing, ward and theatre duty, counselling and housekeeping. They had so much of respect to the patient and they were willing to do any type of work for the patient. And they were also willing to share with us in the dream of the hospital. That is how our program started. So from 1976 onwards till today, every year we take about 100 girls from the village. Four highly trained paramedics assist each doctor, thus optimizing the surgeon's time and skill. In this way, a doctor at Aravind averages over 2,000 surgeries a year, against a national average of 220. Doctors are not paid extra because they are doing more operation. But the other way it helps also. Ours is a teaching institution. The more patients are there, the better the training can be. Well, my name is Michael Ober, and I was in Aravind January of 2003, and uh, I was there as a resident. The physicians there were incredible. They were fantastic surgeons, they gave incredible patient care, and their priorities could serve as a model to every physician in the United States. I'd say one of the more interesting parts was how medications and things that we take for granted, pieces of equipment, are not available. The ingenuity and the fact that they're manufactured at Aravan was very impressive. This is the intraocular lens production facility which we started in 1992 with support from Seva Foundation in the U.S. This is the intraocular lens which we produce here and this lens serves as a substitute lens once we remove the natural cataract lens from the eye. In the early 90s, there were no eyewell manufacturers in India. We had to import lenses from the West. At that time, each lens was costing around $200. They were not affordable in most developing countries. So we devised our own methods of making lenses up to international standards. And we were able to sell them at about $5 a piece. 
Today, we manufacture a wide range of ophthalmic products as well and we are exporting them to over 85 countries around the world. Here to Nirvana. Have you read the book? It's a, it's a, it's a, like Lonely Planet. It's a tour guide, but all for spiritual destinations. Different ashrams and, uh, and Aravind Hospital is on it. <laughs> Dr. Venkataswamy's pioneering work and his compassionate spirit have been recognized by a number of honors. Among them are the Padma Sri Award from the Government of India, the Helen Keller International Award, which has been presented to him at the United Nations, and the Time Life Service Award from the International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness. We await with eagerness this first lecture on the theme of rationalism and spiritualism. Please welcome Dr. Govindapa Venkataswamy. Now, it's a very, very funny experiment. I used to sit with the ordinary village man because I am from a village. What do you call a rustic, or unsophisticated man or woman? Paper, pencil, slate, nothing like that. So the only way children could be taught learning was to collect sand and spread it on the floor. The fingers we used to write. One of the things the village children have to do is every house got a buffalo and a pair of bullocks for farming and all those things. The boy was asked to take the buffalo for grazing out. So I used to do it early morning, half past five o'clock or five o'clock in the morning. Mother used to wake me up and get up, go and take the buffalo and go. I used to sit with the ordinary village man because I am from a village. And suddenly he turned around and then you see he seemed to contact his inner being. You seem to be one with him. But here is a soul which has got all the Simplicity of confidence. Doctor, whatever you say, I accept it. An implicit faith in you. And then you respond it. Here is an old lady who has got so much faith in me, I must do my best for her. Now how am I going to train myself to do perfection? Orbindo talked about the perfectibility of the human soul. And Dr. V embodies it. He embodies the perfectibility of humanity, both in his work on the perfection of himself and his work on ridding the world of one form of suffering. Sri Aurobindo and the mother were two key spiritual figures of the 20th century. Dr. V was introduced to their teachings in Pondicherry. They say there's a lot of energy and in the higher levels of consciousness. See, that consciousness sees the truth as such. Mind doesn't see the truth. And it can organize things in a better way than what the mind can do. What he calls divine life on earth. Nobody had become a doctor in my village or in my community also at that time. Doctor is something very, very high up. I remember vividly <coughs> when I must have been hardly five or four or five years old. Next door to Osavi, I heard a sh shouting and yelling in the early morning. And I was told that the pregnant woman during delivery died. That lady must have been hardly about 20 years old at that time. And that upsets me. A young woman, hardly 20 years old, suddenly dying away and you don't see her anymore. And said, can you not do something to prevent it?
Dr. V entered medical school with plans to become an obstetrician. In 1944, he joined the army as a medical officer. Four years later, he was discharged after contracting a rare form of rheumatoid arthritis, a condition that left his fingers permanently crippled, barring him from a career in obstetrics. That is how I got into the eye hospital, sheer accident. And even after joining the eye hospital, walking a few steps was difficult, painful. Holding a pen was difficult, and holding a surgery was less difficult. It took some years for me to pick up surgery. Dr. V went on to personally perform more than 100,000 successful eye surgeries. After I became an eye doctor, I started appreciating how good his surgery was. In fact, he was our teacher in surgery. And uh, all the instruments, he knew how to handle them very elegantly. There was no special instruments for him. The instruments that we normally use, he used to handle them, but in a different angle. And his surgery used to be so perfect. My father died when I was uh, 16. Because he died, Dr. Vengarsam is the eldest man of the family, so he took the responsibility of developing all of us. So he educated us. Because of that, he didn't want to get married so that he can spend more time with the family. I still remember once I went to a movie with my pair, with my mother and aunt. And after coming from the movie, I had to write about 10 hours what moral values I learned from that movie. <laughs> and then subsequently, I, I was not very happy to go for any movies. And he says, if you were there, what will you do to change the movie in order to reach the common people? I was hardly 15. At that age, I was not too, so happy to answer. In 1976, Dr. V retired from government service at the mandatory retirement age of 58. He then started a non-profit trust with his brothers and sisters. And in the same year, an eye clinic was opened in Madurai. It had 11 beds and was called Aravind, after Sri Aurobindo. Uh, when Dr. V started, sometimes I have sort of joked that uh, he started with the finest group of ophthalmologists in India. What Dr. V used to say is, get less, do more number. That was our slogan. And nobody will know what it was exactly that time. I mean, even now, you also, maybe it will be difficult for you to understand what was the situation that time. Sometimes I had to pledge the gold jewelry from the family and get money. Because I had to pay to the laborers every Saturday. So like that in the beginning we had a lot of problems with our finance. So I agreed to mortgage my house and then we borrowed about 200,000 rupees or something like that. Then we are gradually building that new building which you see now. When we finished the ground floor, we occupied the ground floor. And we could keep the patients there, operate there. Then we built the first floor. So as we earned more and more money, we added more floors. Dr. V's younger brother, Srinivasan, with whom he lives, he has found the land, he has built the buildings, he has controlled the costs, and I'll bet you I have heard Dr. V say a half dozen times, without Srinivasan, I could not have done this. Actually, always the Vengarsam has got a character. Once we complete one job, he will never say anything. We have done a good job. Then after two months, you will say, as you, you will always have a way of saying, as you say, why not to start a hospital in some place? He will never say that we will start a hospital. As you say, or as we all discussed, we should start a hospital in that place. Throughout the time that I have spent with Dr. V, 
his vision of what was possible was way beyond what was anything reasonable. I first met Dr. Venkateswamy in 1978 when he came to Michigan and I was working at that time at the University of Michigan uh, Medical School. When Dr. Venkateswamy came to meet me out of his interest in continuing education, he remarked that he would someday like to have a center like this one. And in the back of my mind I was thinking, now wait a minute, he has an 11 bed eye clinic in India. He's coming to the States and walking around this 40,000 square foot facility saying he wants one just like this. How is he ever going to do it? And in a matter of years, in uh, around 18 years, he had done it and established the Lyons Arvind Institute for Community Ophthalmology. This institute helps transfer the Aravind model to other eye care programs in India and the rest of the developing world. It set itself originally a goal of working with 100 hospitals through the international uh, NGO partners and then make sh and try to, try to help each one of them to do maybe 5,000 or more surgeries per year with good quality and a sustainable manner. Now this is a good model from Malawi. Malawi, we have been working with them. Before going there, they were able to do about 440 surgeries in a year, 449 in the whole of 98. As a result of the interaction like that one, now they are able to do that number in one month. Today we are working with 150 hospitals and many are doing far beyond the 5,000 that we set and they are touching 10,000, 12,000. Some are becoming role models very much like what Aravind is in this part of the country and we are using them to propagate this message even further. And I think that's something else Dr. V has taught me that the way you make things work the best is you, you don't hold on to it and say this is all mine and I'm in control of it but you give it away which is what he does. You train everybody, every day you coach him, guide him play with him and all those things. So you can develop him quickly as a top player. So he has developed a physical stamina, mental capacity and a vision. So this is how doctors feel. They carry this all their life also. As uh, we all know, ophthalmologists are a premium in this country. We are only 10,000 to 11,000 ophthalmologists for a billion population. So we have to be much more productive to meet the demands of the people. So, and Arvind has pioneered a system that helps us to do high volume work and I think it's a work in progress. We have reached probably 40-50% of what one could do. Today, more than 30 members across three generations of Dr. V's family work at Arvind. More than 25 years later, all the original team members still work here. Dr. Nam and Dr. Nachyar have taken on the responsibility of heading the organization, while Dr. V now serves as chairman. When the leadership changes, the approach may change, the approach, but the founder's vision and mission of 
reduce in the needless blind depending on the circumstances and change which has taken globally and regionally. So we have to change, we are keeping the same thing. Book 5, Canto 2 There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. We are greater than our thoughts. And sometimes, Earth unveils that vision here. To live, to love, are signs of infinite things. When we grow in spiritual consciousness, we are into ourselves with all that is in the world. So there is no exploitation. It is ourselves we are helping. It is ourselves we are healing. Now, he says, beauty is something the soul wants it. Whenever you see that a man is in contact with his soul, then he enjoys a beautiful sky, a beautiful tree, a beautiful bird. But suddenly you hear a piece of music, go, oh, and then you lose yourself. It's like that. Everything seems to open up in a different way. Jaiwi, anak puan artelah, udah untuk baru, udah pergi ke sekolah, kau untuk baru. Nama kita yang kemana mana, naik lah, naik lah, jaiwi pun.